Hello, my name is Todd Hurt. I'm the director of the Vulnerable Constituent Services Unit in the Securities Division of the Secretary of State's Office. The Missouri Secretary of State's Office has securities in their jurisdiction and purview. One of the things that we take a look at quite often is those who may be a victim of financial fraud, scams or schemes. We take a look at these because many times people don't even know that they're a victim. We encourage you to give us a call and we'll take a look at it and if you're not a victim of securities fraud, then we will get you to the appropriate authority that will investigate. So now that you know who, what, and where, we're going to discuss how and why. First, why. Many people fall victim to financial violations. It is estimated that as much as $39 billion annually are taken from the rightful owner through exploitation of one way or the other. A good portion of this is securities and trading related. Now, $39 billion, that's a big number, right? That's a bigger number than even our state budget, and that's annually. But what it is is a global number. That's all the fraud and the globe. But what have we found, really? You can now sit down at your computer and be in China, right? The internet has opened up your backyard, your front porch, your living room to global fraud. So you have to be mindful of this big number. How does the securities division find out about these violations? One is the victim tells us. We have an investor protection hotline manned in the investor education section of our securities division, the vulnerable citizen services hotline, which I answer along with my staff in the securities division, also person to person outreach efforts like this. We do this once or twice a week across the state, go into rotary clubs, schools, investment companies, uh, senior centers, uh, nursing homes, and give this presentation. Oftentimes, somebody will come up to me or Chris at the end of the presentation and say, this is what happened to me. Can you help me with this? Sometimes it's not securities and trading related, but our mission is no closed doors. We're gonna try and get that person to the proper avenue of help so that they can remedy their problem. We also have a system of online reporting that I'm gonna show you here how you do that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you this documentary, kind of a short documentary of a case that we closed in the Securities Division two years ago. These are actual victims. Normally we keep everything confidential. These victims wanted to tell their story. They wanted to tell their story so that others would not become victims. Let's see what we play this here. Every day, someone somewhere is running a scam to get your hard-earned money. Maybe it's a person you already know or a stranger calling you on the phone or finding you on the internet. The Missouri Secretary of State's office is working hard to investigate financial scams and to help protect Missourians from becoming victims. One such case involved a St. Louis pastor, Mark Stafford, who stole the life savings of 21 families, mostly seniors, whose trust he gained as a financial investor, except that he preached a fast-talking message that his investments were safe they answered an ad for safe investments and a free dinner. And that got my parents to go and I asked my mom, so you had a steak dinner? She said, no, it was just spaghetti. But there were a lot of people there and he was a very good salesman. Mr. Stafford was basically telling people they were investing in IRAs and he would just generate his own IRA statements. And after we subpoenaed the bank records, we found out he was spending the money on himself, his business, and basically gambling in Forex accounts, losing a lot of funds that way. But he would, in turn, generate these statements and send them out to the investors, and they thought their investments were growing, and they weren't aware of what was actually going on. When I finally realized that this was actually happening to me and others, I just was so depressed. I didn't want to get out of the bed in the mornings. It's kind of like I couldn't escape it. It was always there, just lingering, just there. So it's just been very hard. I've worked for 36 years. I've sacrificed, I've saved, I've always lived on a budget just because I knew that I did want to retire and I did want to have uh, financial security. I wanted to be able to help my sons and maybe help put my granddaughters through college. Oh, I got this great product. 
and I thought about you. I mean, it was Leroy and Corliss worked hard all of their lives, raising a family and saving money. A retired football coach, Leroy could judge a person's character pretty quickly. But he says that he let his guard down with Mr. Stafford and didn't listen to his gut instincts. When we started off, it was good. But when it started to sour, we didn't. We didn't, do, we didn't investigate it yeah, more. We didn't do our due diligence. And, and I kind of had a feeling so. that this was going to all come to head because down the line, I kind of got bad feelings about him when he stopped communicating, when he stopped sending me information and st started giving me all these companies that uh, that he affiliated with and when you call these companies they never heard of them and I said to my wife something is wrong after a year-long investigation by the Missouri Secretary of State's office Mark Stafford pled guilty in federal court to investment fraud he admitted to lining his own pockets with a million dollars from investors he spent it on trading liquor tailored suits and to pay off other investors. They will get caught eventually. And if they're running a Ponzi scheme, the house of cards will fall eventually. Financial scams that prey upon trusting Missourians can be avoided. And knowing how to safeguard your investments will make you one less victim of this crime. The Missouri Secretary of State's Vulnerable Citizen Service Unit is at your service. Call their toll-free hotline or visit MissouriProtectsInvestors.com on reputation or word of mouth. Now, I'm not saying that can't be a factor. It just can't be the only factor. Do your research. Check other, other places, too. Monitor your investments and ask tough questions. Look for trouble receiving your profits. And that's a biggie. If somebody, you know, it's not, it's not their money, it's your money. And if you want to get it back, you should be able to get it back under the circumstances laid out in the agreement. Don't let embarrassment keep you from reporting fraud. It is tough. It is tough when you're a victim, but it's important to stop it and get other people to be a part of our investigation and know what's going on. Read and understand the statements. Report problem to the brokerage or manager. We always say, you know, if there's an unknown caller, we get these calls all the time on our, fo our phones. We're asking, you know, the, our best piece of advice is just don't answer it. Tell people that are going to call you to leave a message and you'll call them back. And that way, you know, you know that it's not one of these scammers that are trying. There's all kinds of phone scams. There's all kinds of, every day there's a new scam or a new method to steal money out there. And just be aware, be on your toes for these things. We ask that everybody prepare to be vulnerable. That's how our lives are going to end most likely, right? Dementia. Alzheimer's, uh, disabilities creep into our lives and essentially make us unable to make our own decisions. So we ask that you involve children, nieces, nephews, younger siblings, etc. with financial decisions. And it's important to stress the plurality, in other words, children, nieces, nephews, because sometimes, and too many times really, exploitation comes from within. Involving two or more with financial decisions, matters, and accounts lends to the accountability of those entrusted with the matter. Few of us in life will live it without being vulnerable at one time or the other. A message of being prepared to research offers, knowing when to say no, and involving trusted others before vulnerability creeps into our lives will help stop exploitation before it starts.